will set down for committee next sitting day, and I call on government orders of the day numbers two to four. Employment Standards Legislation Bill Committee Stage, Building Earthquake Prone Buildings Amendment Bill Committee Stage, Health Protection Amendment Bill Committee Stage. I declare the House and committee on those bills. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Chairman. Members, the House and Committee for Consideration of the Employment Standards Legislation Bill, the Building Earthquake Prone Buildings Amendment Bill, and the Health Protection Amendment Bill. Members, we first turn to the Employment Standards Legislation Bill, and the question is at Part 1, Stand Part. This is debate on clauses 3 to 81 and schedules 1 and 2. I call Sue Maroney. Well, thank you, Mr Chair. Today is International Women's Day, and so it seems right and proper that we're here debating some positive moves on paid parental leave um, and doing that in part one of this bill. So I think that's very appropriate. And paid parental leave has been a bit like that in this House. It seems that every day that we're debating this in the House, whether the government's for it or against it, they seem to flip-flop around a bit on it. We, it seems to be on a day that is um, incredibly important to the issue that, that we are debating, and today on International Women's Day is no different. Mr, Mr. Chair, my, for my initial contribution on this bill, I'd like to focus on the new section 71DA. It's a, an amendment to clause 56 of this bill. And it's something that I feel very proud to have had a part in bringing about, because this amendment will make a big difference to some of, uh, to many, many families actually in New Zealand, the families whose baby has been born preterm, prematurely born baby. Because what the Labour Party has been able to do is to drive a position where the whole parliament is about to actually extend paid parental leave, give additional paid parental leave to exactly those families. And I particularly want to pay my um, respects to a woman by the name of Danelle Bellinger-Taylor, because I actually think if there's one person who's responsible for this, and I know the government's going to try and lay claim to it that it's their idea, um, the ACT Party will say it was their idea, um, but the parliamentary record will show that it was actually a Labour Party amendment that actually um, was the, the first idea around getting additional paid parental leave for families in this situation. So I talk about Danelle Bellinger-Taylor because she is a woman who came and did a, a submission to a select committee that first put this issue on the table. Now, I think this is a great story to be told because this is a story of how participating in democracy by making a submission to a select committee can make a big difference. And it can make a big difference to a whole range of families. So in this instance, the simple submission that Danelle Bellinger-Taylor came along and gave to a select committee about the experience that she had as a mother of twins has ended up bringing about this change. So she told her story. She talked about how, how traumatic it was and how difficult it was for her to be uh, back in paid employment after when her twins were five months old. And the, uh, the, problem that she, the, the problem that it created for her was so big that she resigned from her job because she could not make it work. If she wasn't up feeding one twin or the other throughout the night, she was not getting much sleep, then she was trying to go to work the next day, dropping the twins off at early childhood education, going back on two or three occasions throughout the day to feed them, and then um, going home on public transport, doing it all over again five days a week, and she simply found that she couldn't continue to do it. And so she resigned her job, she was back before the select committee when her twins were five years of age to tell us that she had still not made her way back into paid employment. She had lost her connection with her employment at that point in time because it was just 
too hard. This caused me to think about not only the plight of, of um, families where there is the joy of a multiple birth, but the plight of families where there is a prematurely born baby um, or a baby born with disabilities and their additional needs to have additional paid parental leave so that the bonding and attachment could be formed so that the families under more pressure would be able to actually sustain that and be able to focus on developing that bonding and attachment with their babies. So that was the beginning of the story that brings about new section 71DA in part one. But what happened next, I think, um, is pretty instructive about our parliamentary environment. Because I um, proposed an amendment along those lines to a bill I had before this parliament in an effort to secure the government's support for that measure. Actually, not much more than 12 months ago was when I proposed that amendment, just probably about 14 months ago. What did the government do then? They voted against it. They voted against it just 14 months ago. And not only did they vote against it just 14 months ago, Mr Chair, not only did they vote against this particular measure just 14 months ago, but they also made sure that the amendment could not pass. Because what they did, uh, well, actually, no, let me track just a little bit back. Um, what I did was I went to secure the vote of as many MPs as I could to get that amendment through for those families. And I was one vote short. And I knew that I could not look those families in the eye and say that I had done everything possible to get their needs addressed if I didn't go in and look at every MP and ask for their vote. That meant that I ended up in the office of David Seymour, asking for his support. And I want to say that in an MMP environment, wasn't this a lesson? that actually David Seymour said, yeah, that's an entirely reasonable thing to, to think about and to support. And he said that he would support it. And so suddenly that amendment had the legislation, 14, had the numbers in the House 14 months ago to go through. So the truth is, if the National Party hadn't meddled and got in the way, this provision could have been in 14 months ago. And the prematurely born babies and their families for the last 14 months could have had exactly this provision in place. But the National Party played politics. They played politics instead. And so here we are today with all of those families in the interim period missing out on this provision. So what is the provision? Well, the provision is that if a baby is born uh, before 37 weeks gestation, so that's the, the medically accepted uh, definition of full term. So a baby is full term if they, if they are born at 37 weeks of gestation or beyond. If they're born before that, they are technically preterm. What this part of the bill does is it says that for every week that that baby is born prematurely, that the parents of that baby will be able to have an additional week of paid parental leave. And that, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chair, sorry, is going to be a big relief for those families. Because think about being in the situation of having um, sometimes uh, surprisingly a baby born early. So sometimes people know their babies come early, are coming early, but often they do not, and it just happens. Suddenly, you're finished work when you didn't expect to. Suddenly, you have a baby um, earlier than you expected to, and suddenly, and quite frequently, the pre prematurely born baby is, um, is in hospital for a prolonged period of time. And so, Often the parent is having to, take, um, having to take time off work from that point onwards, even though their baby may not come out of hospital for three or four weeks. What happens quite frequently is that um, under the provisions that we have currently in this country, those families are forced to go back into paid employment before their baby um, is really at the, at the age of, uh, of four or five months where the paid parental leave provisions are now. So these are the babies that probably need um, a lot of support. They need that extra bonding time, and certainly their families need additional time to prepare, because in many instances, they haven't been prepared for this early birth. And in many instances, there are complications that come with the fact that this, this child has been born early. And so it's great to see on International Women's Day that this 
is going to be addressed. In fact, it will come into effect on the 1st of April, should this bill pass through its stages this week. This provision will come in from the 1st of April this year. Mr, Mr. Chair, I'm very proud of the role that Labor has played in making this happen. Because there is no doubt that this would not have happened if it wasn't the Labour Party pushing this agenda of extending paid parental leave. And in this instance, um, joined by and informed by a fantastic young mum by the name of Danelle Ballinger-Taylor, who came along to have her say in our parliamentary process and has changed and improved the lives of thousands of New Zealand children as a result. It's a great celebration on International Women's Day to think about how one woman made such a difference for children throughout this country, and I, I really want to celebrate that. But, Mr Speaker, uh, Mr Chair, the downside of this is that if it wasn't for the politics being played by the National Party over paid parental leave and over families and the support they need, for goodness sake, then we would have had this measure a good 14 months ago. And it's very sad uh, for uh, those families, and there are many of them, who have had prematurely born babies in the meantime.